Your reasons for listening to this show, well, those are your own. But just keep in mind that the views, information, or opinions expressed on the Tuttle Daily Podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of our sponsors. Yeah, it's called free speech, people. Nobody's forcing you to listen. One of a kind shades made to order by Vaporshades.com. Vapor Shades designs the outer layer of the sunglasses just like a wrap on a car. They customize your sunglasses, marbling the paint. The end result is no two pair of sunglasses are alike. Yours will be completely unique to you. Check us out at Vaporshades.com. Use promo code TUTTLE for 15% off your entire order. Get ready for your daily dose of TUTTLE. Uh, the all-time greatest uh, intern slash producer we've ever had, of course, TUTTLE. Tuttle in Florida. From the Vapor Shades Hobo Fish Camp, it's the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Anarchy! 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 No wonder nobody likes you, Tuttle. Everything's a goddamn debate. Welcome to another edition of the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Hope you guys are enjoying your day so far. Make sure you go to my website, Tuttle.net. That's Tuttle with two Ds, T-U-D-D-L-E dot net. There's a couple of ways that you can actually get a hold of me. You can email me, Tuttle at gmail.com, or leave me a voicemail, 407-270-3044. want to thank everybody that joined the YouTube live stream. The Tuttle Daily Podcast live stream happens every single night, Monday through Friday, at YouTube.com slash Tuttle. Starting at 8. Came out with a great idea. I talked about this. If you missed last night's show, a couple of my sponsors have not been paying up. I talked about this. I really don't, I, I don't have a problem if a sponsor comes to me and tells me that they no longer want to advertise with me. But you got to tell me. Because if you don't tell me, I'm automatically going to assume that we're still on board. We still have a deal, but no, I've been running your spots for a couple of months now, and I haven't gotten anything. It's almost been three months on one of them. There was another one that I got a deal with that they're really not paying, but they're doing it on trade. Whenever I need something, they get it for me. I have not been able to get a hold of that person at all, so I came up with the idea. You know, I I, I keep forgetting that I am not on the radio anymore. On the radio, you got to play by a certain set of rules called Plugola Payola. You just can't have somebody pay you money and then you get, uh, get paid underneath the table. Hell, I got fired from real radio the first time around because of that shit. But I forgot. I'm doing a podcast now. I am my own entity. And I can pretty much do what I want to do. And if you listen to last night's live stream, I will promote anything you want me to. A 30-second read. I don't give a damn what it is. Yes, I'm a whore. I am a whore for sale. And I will promote any of the stuff that you want me to. And we'll cut a deal. Email me, Tuttle at gmail.com. My producer, Vulture, will get with you. Now, if you want to, if you want to get on a regular like rotation, because I got I got two spots that are about to open up, and it's not like you're you're paying like high high dollar like you would at a terrestrial radio station, but just help me out. I would love to promote any of your businesses. Like I said, email me tuttle at gmail dot com, and Vulture will get get with you. Uh before I get into this next bit that I'm about to play, uh, you guys have heard me talk about the problems that I've been having with the PT Cruiser. Well, the other day, I mentioned I, I picked up a friend from the airport, and I took, I, I took the truck. I took the Ford F-150. My parents had a doctor's appointment. wasn't very, very far. Uh, I've already taken the PT Cruiser a couple of times back to them. They haven't been charging me anything else, okay? Well, while I'm in the middle of hanging out, having the best day that I have had in a really, really long time, I get a phone call. Yeah, the PT's messing up again. Yeah. So I get up this morning. I'm like, fuck it. 
I'm going down there with the mechanics. And I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. Guess what? Tech engine light didn't turn on. And this is what happened. All right, guys. I am actually back on my way to the mechanics. This will be now the fourth or fifth time that I have had to bring my 2006 PT Cruiser to. They said that it had been fixed. They keep telling me over and over again, oh, well, you got some loose wirings. It's just excuse after excuse after excuse. You know, yesterday I told you about picking up my friend at the airport, and I wanted to take the, the truck, okay, because I just got this car done. Now, I drove this car around for two or three days, but I still didn't feel safe enough about driving it all the way to Orlando. Their doctor's appointment wasn't that far away. So I ended up taking the truck, and while I'm hanging out, my mom and dad call me, hey, the PT, it's stuttering again. What, what's happening is they said it was a cam sensor valve that needed to be replaced. Cost me about $600. Then I, they said, well, you know, your, your connections are bad. They replaced the connections. And then another time they told me, oh, the wiring needs to be done. Now, they haven't charged me anything for this stuff to be done, but it, it, it's getting to the point where it's frustrating because I need to use this car. I'm going to be going to Bubba's show on April 15th, and I cannot afford for this car to break down driving across the state of Florida. Any, any ideas or tips or, like, just suggestions, please give me a call, 407-270-3044. Or you can leave me an email, Tuttle at gmail.com. Because at, at what point, what, at what point do I say enough is enough? Like seriously. Because it's becoming frustrating. I need this car. I know it's not in the best of shape, but I've kept up with the maintenance. I get the oil changed every 3,000 miles. I, I, I change the fluids, check every single thing on it. I put new tires on it. So it's not like I'm not taking care of this car. So you can understand my frustrations. Yes, they're not charging me anything else, but just fix the fucking car, please. I need it. All right. So in a weird twist of events, I, uh, you know, my parents drove my car. They didn't leave any gas in it. I was on fumes. I stopped to put gas in it. And now the check engine lights off. I, I cannot bring this car into the mechanic if the check engine light is not on and it's not doing it. Here, I'll give you an example of what what's happening, okay? So they're saying that it's one of the sensors. So anytime I get the car over 2,500 RPMs, it starts stuttering. It starts stuttering. So you know what I'm about to do? I'm about to take 442 down to 95. And then I'm going to take 95 down to uh, 44 because the mechanic is near four, Highway 44 in US 1. And I'm going to dog it. I'm going to dog it. I'm going to get this, this fucking PT Cruiser up to at least 80. I know that's not a lot, but for this car it is. And I'm going to see if it does it. Because obviously I'm not, I'm not going to bring this car into uh, a mechanic and say, Oh, it's having problems. And it's not doing it now. Not going to be that guy that's just going to call and complain. But I, once again, this is why this is so frustrating. Now, how many times that this car they said has been fixed? That's why I need your help. Like, for real, email me, Tuttle at gmail.com, or leave me a voicemail, 407-270-3044. I'm almost up here to 95. And I want to see if it does it or not. Because like I said, if you get it over 2,500 RPMs, it starts it starts bogging down. Not bogging down. It just, it kind of, mm, mm, mm. sound like that one car, car commercial that they did where, you know, people come in and they make the sound that the noise that the car makes. And the guy can kind of diagnostic or do whatever with it just by the sound that the people are making. So, so you got to be careful going down 442 here. 
I mean, it's kind of like Windermere in Orlando. You're going one mile over a speed limit. These Edgewater cops will bust your balls. See, I'm not even on 95 yet, but I am definitely over 2,500 RPMs right now, and it's doing nothing. Like I said, they're going to they're gonna laugh me out of the goddamn uh, mechanic shop if I bring the car in there and the check engine light's not even on. This, I'm not going to do that. I don't know if it's pride. I don't know if it's ego. Me trying to feel like I'm a man's man. I'm just not going to do it. I tell you, if, if this check engine light comes on again when I get this on 95, it, I'm taking it directly to the fucking shop. Check, 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 check. Testing one, two, one, two, one, two. All right, here we go. This is going to be a test run here to see if this car messes up. Because I did this the other day and I had no problems. Give the car to my parents. Jesus Christ. Like, I, I needed that on top of everything else while I was having one of the greatest days of my life yesterday. All right, here we go. We're getting on 95. I am in fourth gear right now. I'm at 40 miles an hour. I'm over 2,500 RPMs right now. Just shifted into fifth gear. And let's see here. I'm up to 60 right now. Still nothing. I'm definitely over 2,500 RPMs. I'm up to 70 now. Still nothing. Still nothing at all. See, God, what? I'm I'm not gonna do it. I'm I I refuse to, and I I know that my ego is gonna get the best of me. I know that I should take this car down to the shop right now. But I also don't want to be a laughing stock. A gun, uh, uh, you know, mechanics are men, men. I'm not one of those, uh, you know, guys that need to be a manly man. But I also don't want to go down there and look like a f idiot and say, "Hey, having problems with the car? I'm up to 75 right now. Nothing. Dog piss, Willie. This is really frustrating. Now watch. Once I get it home." I'll start having more problems. I just... It, it, that is just my luck. Yep, 75. Doing 75. Like, I, I rarely get this car to 80. Almost 80 right now. Nothing still. What the fuck, people? Alright. I'm backing it down. I don't want to dog the car out too much. Like I said, never owned a new car in my life. And I got to try to baby this one to the very last minute until it's on life support. And then I'll have to pull the plug one day. I know it's coming. He's <sighs> a nerd. I've only been arrested one time. A radio personality. Professionally? I'm not in the best position that I've ever been in. And hot talk satirizer? You would think with everything that's going on, a Caucasian like myself wouldn't be able to randomly talk to an African-American or a minority. You're listening to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Wish you could have just flown and had your vehicle arrive a day or two later so you can enjoy more time doing what's important to you? Well, you can. Just give Starfire Transport a call. Let the professionals do the driving while you're flying. Starfire Transport specializes in RV and auto transport. They'll also haul watercraft from boats to PWCs, cargo trailers, and more. Service available throughout the continental United States. So don't wait. Call Brian today at 574-349-4193 or 989-751-6106 for your next move. 10% off for veterans past or present. Also, make sure to tell them Tuttle sent you for an additional discount. That's Starfire Transport. Do you have something you want to say? Hey, what kind of preacher is you? Leave Tuttle a voicemail. Because you're kind of ignorant. Especially if you think he's being an asshole. No mega bitch! Will your hurtful comments offend Tuttle? No, baby! Call the show at 407-270-3044. No, baby! All right, guys. Welcome back to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. I have got a great interview lined up because... I've kind of had to deal with what this woman wants to talk about. She's Australian. Her name is Sarah Conley. And it's funny. 
as soon as I hear that name, I, I think Sarah Connor, Sarah Connor from the Ter- Terminator movies, John Connor's son. I don't know if a lot of you guys have realized that that is one of the biggest paradoxes in time travel movies out there. How, how can, see, because remember, they send Kyle Reese back. John Connor sends Kyle Reese back to the future, not like the movie, but back to the future to protect his mom. How is that possible? Because Kyle Reese ended up getting Sarah Connor pregnant and became John Connor. How does that happen? Because there's no John Connor if you don't send Kyle Reese back. And the only reason I bring that up is because when I was doing my research, when you type in Sarah and then you, go, you do the C-O-N, it comes up Sarah Connor automatically. Linda Hamilton was a complete badass, but man, oh man, did she look rough. She looked rough in that last Terminator movie. But I'm waiting on Sarah Connolly. I, I'm, I'm a little worried because she is all the way in Australia. But right now, it is morning time over there. You know, yesterday we had Jeremy Nunes on. He ended up showing up. But we've, we've kind of had a little bit of a bad string of luck. When it comes to these guests and what is really going to piss me off is because this is actually an interview that I have prepared for. I really have because you guys know my problems. You know, my drug addiction, my alcoholism, and that's what she specializes in. You know, the stuff came out today that Tiger Woods was going over twice the speed limit which caused him not to be able to negotiate that turn. And I feel kind of bad about what I tweeted because, you know, a lot of people have like accused me of not being sober. So I, 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 I feel bad about what I tweeted, but I, I, I did. I said, I was like, you know what uh, caused me not to be able to negotiate turns back in the day? Drugs and alcohol. We've all seen that video of Tiger Woods, the the police dash cam of when they pulled him over. I think he was on Xanax and some pain pills because of a back surgery he just had. So I probably shouldn't jump to conclusions, but how the hell are you going double over the speed limit and you can't negotiate a turn? Tiger Woods can negotiate a dog leg to the right all day long on the golf course, and you're telling me he cannot, he can't negotiate a curve? It just doesn't make sense. We're not getting all the details there. They say that he made absolutely no attempt at being able to stop. So what were you on, Tiger? Was there any other women in the car? Because you know Tiger loves the horse. Was he getting some riz his at the time? Who knows? We probably won't know. Now, if it was somebody like me, oh, bet your ass, all the dirty details would have been coming out. So I'm just waiting on Sarah Conley right now. want to make sure that she does show up because, like I said, there's a lot of things that I could have been doing. I could have been recording other stuff. Maybe I should not just rely on these interviews. Uh, I don't even know what time it is right now in Australia. Right now, I'm recording this, and it is 5.23. So she has about seven minutes to be able to call in. And I've been debating on how I'm going to handle these people that no call, no show. Because Vulture, this is not my producer Vulture's fault. It is not his fault, because a lot of these interviews have been scheduled weeks in advance. They get alerted. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll give you an idea. It is 7.23 a.m. Thursday there. Yeah, you know what? Suck it, flat earthers. You're telling me that the earth is flat? It is 5.23 p.m. on Wednesday here, and it is 7.23 a.m. the next day. So you flat earthers can eat my ass. I'm just telling you. Just tongue it. Nuh, nuh. Right there. That's exactly what I'm trying to tell you. So let's see if she shows up. But I I, I do not know 
how I'm going to start handling these people. Because we went three in a row, three for three, no show, no call. And, and that's the thing about it. Like, I know stuff happens. It happens all the time. If you called the day before or even the, the day of and gave me enough time to say, hey, can't make the interview. Yeah, the guy yesterday, Jeremy Nunez, showed up. He was, he was absolutely amazing. I wish that I could have talked with him a little bit more, but I was on a time constraint yesterday. You know what? The guy was appreciative of being on the show. He emailed me. He actually said that he was going to use one of the jokes that I said during the interview in his stand-up. I was like, yeah, hell yeah, have at it, man. I actually told him I would like for him to be able to come on the show not not as an interview, but just to come on and be like a guest co-host. I would like to hear how he can mix it up because the, that's the thing about it, guys. And, and I'm, not, I'm not accusing Jeremy Nunez of doing this. But we had all types of comedians come in and out of the studio when I worked for the Monsters in the Morning at Real Radio 104.1. And the ones that got to stick around the longest were the ones that just came in, sat on the show, and just just shoot the shit with us. Now, the ones that were that got one segment or even a half a segment, because once you start, you can tell when a comedian is purposely setting up his uh, punchlines and stuff like that, because a lot of these people do that. A lot of these comedians come in there. You go on shows like Bob and Tom and stuff. All that stuff is set up. I think one of the greatest interviews that we ever had, well, Burt Kreischer was one on The Monsters. He just came in, just BS with us. Richard Lewis was absolutely fantastic. And they just sat in. They were like a member of the show for a day. And it was some of the best stuff. Now, Tracy Morgan was a different story. That was just one of the most awkward fucking interviews that we have ever done in our lives. Like, I, I love that stuff. I, it's one of my favorite interviews that I have ever seen in a studio in person. But Russ, Russ, he does not like awkwardness as much as I do. I like it to be awkward as possible. Maybe that's why I like the TV show The Office so much. So still waiting, still waiting for Sarah Connolly. Where you at, Sarah? It is 527. You got about three minutes. I mean, you can't you can't just show up right on the dot. I mean, I'll take it. I'm not gonna complain. But, you know, like the days that I, I show up late, the people are already waiting for me. And then I got Vulture bitching me out. They're on, they're on, they're on. And I'm like, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll be right there. I'm getting buffed. I'm getting ripped out here. Tan as hell. I know a lot of you guys are probably like, ooh, it's putting hell on your skin. Well, guess what? Take a shower every single day. Scrub down. Exfoliate. Moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. Like, I would be like that pig at the, uh, at the fair that they grease up and they let loose. And the first person that can catch that pig will love to do that. I would love to just oil. Well, see, man, that's going to sound really weird. I'm going to say I oil myself up and see if a bunch of men can catch me with a bunch of baby oil. The, this motherfucker is going to start mowing right when I'm trying to record. Why? It's like I attract everybody just wants to make as much noise as they can whenever I'm trying to record. Hey, I guess that's I guess that's what happens when you record in a beat up 2006 PT Cruiser, which I I've already told you the issues that I've been having with that one. Like I said earlier, check engine light. You know, my mom and dad drove it yesterday. That there was all types of problems. The check engine light was on, but when I cranked that bitch up today to take it to uh, the mechanics, guess what? Check engine light was off. I, I got that thing on the interstate, got it up to 80. No problems at all. No bubbles, no troubles. 
I got a, I got a bad feeling about this one, Vulture. I really do. 529. Where are you at? Where are you at, Sarah Connolly? I'd rather talk to Sarah Connor at this point. And she's a fictional character. But well, really, people, what should I do? What should I do with these people? I would like to hear from you. Is it going to give me a bad name with these other guests that could be possibly coming on my show by pitting these people on blast? I'd like to hear from you. Can't take phone calls. Can't take live phone calls. But you can leave me a voicemail. Oh, she is. Oh, we're, oh hell yeah. I'm very excited about this one. You can let her on any time, Vulture. Hey, Sarah. Hi. Can you hear me? Sarah? Yes, I can, Sarah. How are you? I'm really well. How are you? Doing wonderful. What part of Australia are you calling us from? I'm in Brisbane. Brisbane. Now, give me an idea, okay? East Coast, West Coast. Uh, you know, everybody knows where Sydney is. How, how far away from Sydney? So I'm a one-hour flight from Sydney north. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so it's east of, of Australia, but north of Sydney. Now, Sarah, I, you know, I don't like to prep for a lot of interviews because, I, I mean, I have my questions, but I like my interviews to be like living, breathing, like organisms and just let them go where they go and stuff. But I've dealt with the topic that you're coming on to talk about. You know, I am now a year, over a year and a half sober. Um, uh, from alcoholism, for, from alcohol and drugs. Now, can I ask you, can, 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 and, and also I, um, I attempted suicide at the end of 2019 and I was on a lot of psychotropic drugs. I was on mood stabilizing drugs. I got off of those as well too. Um, because Maybe. I, I really, I, I really do think, uh, the countries, the doctors and stuff over prescribe these medications and, and, and it led to a lot of my problems. If I smoke marijuana, you know, people bust my ass about that, but it helps me out with my anxiety. Sure. Can I claim to be sober if I still smoke weed? I think that you can claim whatever you want. I think that if you feel that you're sober smoking weed, then that's your thing. And I completely agree that each individual dictates that, how they label themselves. So I have no judgment on that whatsoever. I just think well, everybody is doing the best that they can and whatever works for them works for them. That's now, my Sarah, opinion. One, one last thing, and then we'll get to where people can check out all of your stuff. You know, here in the United States, you know, uh, alcohol and tobacco just kill so many people, you know, if it, yeah. you know, of liver disease or drunk driving, uh, lung cancer. Just all that stuff. And you know what? Weed is like, you know, it just shows the lobbyists and stuff. Big beer, big alcohol, big tobacco, putting money in the politicians pockets. And that's legal as hell. But when you when you get something from the ground that's natural, that is not like has has harmful stuff. I mean, the worst part, it makes you fat and you eat a lot. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it and it changes the way that you behave quite dramatically <laughs> well, at least well, the alcohol my, anyway well 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 see the thing about it my dad always said this and i don't know how much you know about uh nfl football not not soccer but like football football um you know the philadelphia eagle stadium their fans are so rowdy on game day they actually have a judge and a jail in the stadium because of so many fights and my dad said yeah, they're making a lot of money off of beer, but if they just got rid of the beer, let them smoke a bunch of weed, all the money you lost off of beer, you'd make up on concessions because you'd have people like buying like three things of nachos, pizza, all that good <laughs> stuff. And, and, you, and you definitely would. But Sarah, tell tell people how they can find out about you. Uh, I'm going to give you the floor. Tell them about your website. Tell them how they can find you on social media. Just all the good stuff. Thank you. Yes, so my social media handle is sober underscore sommelier. 
and that um, I know it's a tricky spelling, but it's the way that uh, you spell the wine, like the wine taster. Yeah, the wine Correct. connoisseur. But but Correct. but why, can I can I ask why why that name though? Well, when I quit drinking, I was looking for really good alternatives. So I mm -hmm. enjoy socializing. I enjoy fitting in with people, um, and I was sick and tired of going out and being given water or diet coke or you know all the rubbish alcohol free alternatives that they have. Um, so I started looking for alcohol free wines because I used to love drinking wine. And um, I know quite a lot about wine. I'm not a, an official sommelier, but um, I used to love good wine. And um, so I thought, oh, I'm, I'm now a sober sommelier. So that's how that came about. And I spend a lot of time looking for really good quality alcohol-free alternatives over here in Australia. Now, what's your website once again? <laughs> and, and, and is there an email if anybody wants to contact you? Sure. So my website is soberupside.com.au and that's basically a resource for anyone that's interested in quitting or cutting back on their drinking. It's just got lots of different links to things that they can explore and um, you can contact me through the website. That's probably the best way or, or now, Instagram. Now you're saying cut back. Now every, every case is a little bit different, okay? But the way my mind worked when when I was drinking, I was like, man, if one made me feel good, man, what will two do for me? And then if man, two made me feel really good, four made me feel really great. And then I it just it just it it just kept doubling. It, it was almost like the coronavirus pandemic. It was just it was just like <laughs> doubling and doubling and doubling, you know, um, maybe some people can cut back, but it, it just does not work for me. I'm exactly the same. Um, I think you have to know yourself pretty well. Some, a lot of people are all or nothing. Um, and I think a lot of people that get stuck in addiction are all or nothing kind of people. Um, I see that as a superpower if it's channeled correctly. Um, but we, t we can tend to get, like you say, you know, we get caught up in something and we just want more and more of it. I do believe, however, in uh, my experience that there are people that can moderate quite happily. Um, there are people that maybe drink once a year for Christmas or, you know, just have the odd drink for a celebration. And I just think that's fine, too. Um, I don't think that we're here to to tell people how to live or what no. they should or shouldn't be doing. But um, I think that there's definitely a lot more people, particularly after COVID, who have realized that the drinking is starting to get out of hand. And they want to find, you know, practical ways to just cut back, even if they're not going to quit altogether. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that's important because um, it is a slippery slope and it creeps up on you, as you would know. So, um, it's, yeah, it's I, really, yeah. <clears throat> well, well, one of the things that I want to want to want to talk about, you know, uh, I, I'm going to have to send you the link. One of the, one of the things that opened up my mind the most about alcoholism was uh an interview that dick van dyke do you know who dick van dyke is he's an uh, old uh, entertainer right yes yeah 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 but he was on the show the dick cavett show and and he broke down because not a lot of people knew that he was a raging alcoholic yeah, and right. and and you're, you're talking about going out you know <clears throat> uh socializing with people and stuff uh he talked about how you don't even realize it. It could be your brain. Because uh, this is like a two-part question. Is addiction to alcoholism a physical or a mental thing? Because he said your brain actually gravitates to other alcoholics because it makes you feel better. It feels like you're not going to be judged. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, and it's definitely the too. I mean, the physical addiction is a reality. Alcohol is a highly addictive substance. So it's one of the ones you can die from. It's, it's one of the few. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is. And like you were talking about big alcohol um, before, you know, they've done a great job of convincing us that you only have a problem with alcohol if you're an alcoholic that's lost your job and hit rock bottom. But many people are addicted to alcohol physically that don't even realize they are. You know, they're the people that drink moderately. But get, after three days, they've had three days not drinking. They think, oh, you know, I feel like a drink. That is an addiction. So 100 percent is a physical addiction and 100 percent there's a psychological addiction as well. 
when, um, I, when, you, when, when I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but when, when, no, when no. I first stopped, when, when, when I first stopped, when, you know, because, and, and I want to get to your wake up call because everybody has their wake up call, like, all right, I need to pump the brakes a little bit here on things. But yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's just, it's crazy because when I first stopped drinking, it was physical. The first couple of weeks was physical withdrawal. Then after that, it was mental because whenever I, because when I used to get bored, I'd be like, all right, I'm going to have a drink. So I had to yep. keep busy. I had to stay busy. Absolutely. And this is where I, I believe in this superpower, because I think people that are, you know, you're obviously somebody that is a big thinker. You've got a lot of creativity. You've got a lot of things to offer the world, but oftentimes particularly when we're isolated or we're stuck we just have these busy brains and the quickest way of switching them off is to drink um, and to find another way to channel that energy is, is hard plus mm -hmm. you're fighting against all of those things that you spoke about you know the the boredom which again is is and it's just a, a symptomatic of somebody who's a big thinker um, and I'm super passionate actually about talking about people that have problems with addiction as absolute geniuses half the time. And, you, you know, you, as you say, people like Dick Van Dyke, I mean, there's plenty of um, very high profile, successful people that have struggled with addiction. And I think a big part of that is that mental challenge, you know, needing to switch off, needing to find a way to calm down our busy brains. And until we find a better way of channeling that energy, Alcohol is a really good go-to, not a good go-to. Mm. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. It's an easy go-to. Well, that's what uh, people think, you know, because <laughs> you know. And now, let me let me ask you though. In Australia, do you guys have like universal health care? Like, the, is everybody covered in Australia? It, it's a bit of a, a a tiered system, but most people have to have private health insurance here um on different levels so it's not like in the mm. uk where it's an a open system for everybody here mm. we have to pay, we have to pay for private health but it's a pretty good system um and then the reason, if you yeah sorry no okay. the reason the reason i ask is because i i am a um i'm a victim of childhood trauma growing up okay and 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 i think i think i think not a lot of people, you know, put enough importance into how your childhood shapes your future. It really, really does. And I, I've rarely have ever had insurance here. I think a lot of people self-medicate to to treat their problems or like, I can't afford to go to the doctor. It's easier for me to go to the store and get a, a, a bottle of liquor or whatever to numb the pain. Oh, 100%. And, you know, that's definitely a question of um, education. I mean, ultimately, we don't, if we don't know what options are available to us or we can't afford them, then human nature is to go to the quickest, simplest, easiest, cheapest way of solving the problem. Um, and obviously, as you know, that it works, but it's short term and it has heaps of downsides. Um, I don't know. I know over in the States, from what I understand, the AA movement's probably the, the number one go to because that's that's not a, a paid system, is it over there? No, it's not. But I I I'm the type of person that going at, listen, I, I I'm not knocking it, but I just don't want to go hear other depressing people's stories because it's <laughs> going to make me want to drink. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to yeah. be rude, but no. that's, that's the way that, that I feel about it. Oh, I'm, I'm 100 percent on the same page. Uh, it's the same over here. And I tried it and I went, man, I just want to drink after an AA meeting. Um, so it wasn't the path that I took. Um, and unfortunately, at the moment, it seems to be uh, what well, it is, you know, the main way that people think that they have to go down that path to quit drinking. Um, I could talk about that this topic for a long time, so I won't go on. But mm -hmm. I think that it's so important for us to now look at ways of talking about this that are inspirational, as opposed to, you know, depressing and people trauma dumping and getting caught in that loop of I've got this disease and I'm doomed forever and I'm going to spend the rest of my life talking about all the bad things that I did. I don't believe that human beings are motivated by that. 
um, people can get stuck in it and that can become addictive in itself. But I think there's an absolute need for people to start talking about this in a way that's um, compelling. You know, being sober is the best thing I ever did. I love my life without alcohol. Mm. Um, and I'm I in the best shape. Important. I'm yeah. in the best shape physically that I've ever been. I, people do not realize how many empty calories you're getting. Um, you know, in that Dick Van Dyke thing that he he, he also talked about how alcoholism alcoholism gets so bad that you know you go without you eat less so you can drink more because you're like oh i'm not going to eat this because oh man i can have another drink because you know i'm i'm getting all these empty calories and stuff and i'll go without eating and and then it's 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 just like a snowball effect in your health yeah totally and i think i i mean i know i found when i was drinking a lot that i didn't want to eat actually i just lost my appetite um so although i probably weighed i probably weigh about the same now but at a time i lost a lot of weight because i was just drinking um and it also forget to eat as well <laughs> um, yeah. so yeah it's not, what was it's your not, not, sorry so what was your wake up call what what it was, was the what uh, go ahead it was my dad my dad um mm -hmm. my dad died uh, in 2019 sorry um, about that. In, Thank you. Yeah. Um, in the lead up to his death, I was living here in Australia. I was traveling to and from the UK. I did about four trips, which is, as you may know, a sort of 24 hour Jeez. nightmare um, in three months. And I was on my own a lot and I was dealing with grief and I started to drink way more than I'd ever drunk before to deal with, um, I guess, the grief and, the, and and all the stress that went with that. And I got to spend quite a lot of time with my dad before he died. And ultimately, he said to me one day, he said, I, everything that I didn't want for my life in my last days or weeks is happening now. And um, it just broke my heart. And we spoke about the potential that he felt he'd missed out on about the father that he wished he'd been when we were growing up. Um, and to give that context, my dad was a heavy drinker. Mm -hmm. um, when, I, when I was young and I was listening and the, the regret and I think more than anything it was the potential that he hadn't fulfilled in life because of not totally related to alcohol but definitely in part mm -hmm. and I just thought I do not want this for my life I'd always known that the alcohol was the one thing that was holding me back I, I'd always known that because I've always had depression and anxiety which I used to feed with alcohol um, or try and, like you say, try and medicate myself. Um, but I knew in my heart that alcohol was the one thing I needed to get rid of. And then just seeing my dad in, you know, the end of his life. And I just thought, I don't want to be filled with regret at the end of my life. I nope. want to be filled with the fact that I've lived a full life. I've loved, I've been passionate. I've perhaps made a small change to people in the world. And in order to do that, I need to get rid of this substance. And that was it for me. Um, the day he died, I made the decision. Now, alcoholism, you know, like you, you, when you get into that and that's not enough anymore, did it, did it ever lead to other substances? Uh, not for me. No, um, I've always, it was always uh, alcohol. Although saying that prior to drinking, I was a heavy smoker, really mm. heavy smoker. So um, I've got that tendency that we talked about earlier. Like I go, I go and I go hard. So <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I was a heavy smoker. I quit smoking when I had my kids. And how then, many packs? Um, what like, uh, like how many packs a day were you doing? Or were you, oh, I mean, just. Uh, yeah. One stage in my late twenties, I would be going through two packs a day. Ooh, whoa. So the, you yeah. were now, was it ever bad enough? Cause here in the States, like, you you know because i'm i live in the south i live in florida um and you'll see you know the stereotypical what they like to call you know white trash or whatever they'll they'll yeah. they'll light their next cigarette off of the the one that they've got smoked down to the butt already and just uh you know kind of switch them oh look i think i was definitely guilty of that <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Call, I'm not. Call, I'm not. I'm not doing that. On the phone with me right now is Sarah Connolly. I, I was talking about it before you came on. You know how Google auto populates, and and when you, you know, I was, I was doing research on you, 
And uh, I don't know if you know this, like when you type in Sarah and then you type in the C-O-N, the first thing that comes up is Sarah Connor from the Terminator movies. I, yes. I just I, I didn't know that. And then I, I was like, oh, man, that's kind of cool. I haven't thought about that movie in a while and stuff. And, and but um, <laughs> um, one of the things that while you're on in Australia, there's there's a story that I've been reading a lot. What is up? with the plague of rodents going on in Australia right now? Oh, I cannot help you with that. That is something that I have not heard. Oh, dude, listen, my theory is on this is that, see, because they said you cannot even buy a rat trap right now or a mouse trap <laughs> in, in certain parts of Australia because, it, like, this guy walks out on his front porch. Now, Australia is a big place. It's also sparsely populated in some areas. So who knows? I mean, this could be in the outback. I, I don't even know. But the guy went out on his front porch and shined one of these big like spotlights out and the ground looked like it was moving. There were so many just mice and rats. And my theory on on it is that the brush fires, everybody forgets about the brush fires at the beginning of 2020. Mm. I I I. I think that it killed a lot of the snakes off that actually killed those rodents. I don't know. It was just a random thought. I, I didn't mean to pitch on the spot. It was just like, I got to ask this question if I got an Australian on, on the line here. I think that's a very plausible theory that you've got there. I do. I think that could well be it. It could be due to the, the but then you'd think the bushfires would have with all the rats as well right <laughs> yeah but but they say that they can they, they they're 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 able to re reproduce in three weeks so i mean you you see the problem there from birth I think until three... yeah exactly so uh now let me ask you uh first drink you had i'm i and i know this is going to be a bad joke but was it a foster's you know because my mom used to you know love the big oil can size fosters back in the day uh, and everybody, everybody, you know, that's Australian. Everybody uh, does like Corona. They think of Mexico and stuff. Is that just like, does everybody hate fosters in Australia? It's not fosters actually over here. It's more um, Forex is the big one. Um, but, oh, what's Forex? Um, what's the alcohol content on Forex? Like that oh, sounds that's a good, like... I, th I think it's like 4.5 or something. It's oh, not okay. one of the really high ones. Um, but I grew up in the UK and my first experience of drinking was in France where they give kids wine yes. and water at the dinner table. Um, yeah. So that was my first experience. It was red wine and water. I thought it was disgusting. <laughs> yeah, but but that is the case, though. I don't think people realize in the UK there is, there is a big alcoholism problem, though, too. I mean, because... Age. I mean, they don't realize that it's what what is the uh, the age now that you're able to start drinking in the UK? I mean, it's always been 18. Wow. Um, but, but when I was a kid, you could you could get into pubs at yeah. the age of 15 if you looked. Wow. Apart. Man, oh, man, oh, man. That's that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, we yeah. Uh, my first one was Old English. Oh, phew. Oh, horrible. What's, what's beer. that? It's like oh, old either. It's like a, a yeah, yeah. It's like it's like uh, the quartz. Well, here in the state of Florida, you can't get quartz of beer here, but in other places you can. And then then it got got to the point where I like this. This is how an alcoholic's brain works. I was like, oh man, the beer has too many carbs in it. I'm just gonna go the quickest route, and then I went straight whiskey. I was just going straight whiskey all the Ooh. time. Yeah, Ooh. it was it was bad, bad, bad. It was bad. Yeah, that, that's hardcore. That's hardcore. <laughs> yeah. My wake up call was this nice family. I, I worked at a radio station over in Tampa and until I got, you know, up on my feet and stuff. They let me stay there for like a, almost a year. And we, we we had a nighttime event and I got so hammered that I was dead weight. Like I, I was just out. I was out. I didn't wake up until one o'clock the next or one o'clock in the afternoon the next day. Nobody's in the house. I'm freaking out because I don't remember how I got there. And I talked to my best friend and I was like, yeah, dude, my dad threw out his back. We tried to carry you in. You pissed all over the floor. And I'm like, you know what? These people, out of the kindness of their heart, and I disrespected their household. I did. Yeah. And that was that was yeah. my wake up call. I know it doesn't yeah. sound like 
and I, it, it's not as meaning or, or like as I'm not saying good, you know, but I'm not saying your dad's death was good, but I mean, I, I know my, it, that was just a very simple wake up call for me. I was like, you know what? These people were kind enough out of the kindness of their heart to pit me up for free. I did stuff around the house to help out, but I, I completely disrespected them. I was like, I don't want to be that person. Yeah. And I think that speaks to the values that you have, right? And then being conscious of them. Um, and, yeah, it, you know, it's amazing. Everybody's, I guess, moment of clarity is so different. Um, and it, I guess it doesn't really matter what it is as long as it comes at some point. And yours sounds like just a really, I don't know, it just seems to me like it was a really um, big insight for you. Like you say, I do not want to be that person that's disrespecting others that are being kind to me. Like that's just, I think mean, that's just beautiful. Well, Sarah Conley, tell people once again how they can check out uh, your website and stuff. And if they want to contact you, um, anybody can email you and reach out to you, correct? Like if they're struggling with stuff or like, I mean, uh, it, it's, I mean, are you, uh, is that like, you know, you're trying to help people because you've been through it. Like it, why, why did you decide to start this? Um, for that very reason, really, I just thought if, if it's happened to me, there'll be lots of other people that are struggling with it. And cause I've been there and done that. I'll help as many people as I can. Um, I just want to say I'm not an addiction counselor or coach. So um, if people are really struggling with addiction, then they're best to, seek out professional help but if people mm -hmm. want resources or they want to look at books they can read or they want me to just give them some direction more than happy to chat um, mm -hmm. the website is soberupside.com.au and the instagram is at sober underscore sommelier and you can reach me through either of those and i mm -hmm. um, always love hearing from people and hearing stories and inspiration so yeah, yeah and, and and just please people the ones that are hearing this look if you drank People like me and Sarah are not judging you at all. I don't want you to think we're Debbie Downers. We're not cool people or anything like that. Uh, you know, like I, I've been dating and meeting new people lately. And and I tell them, they, you know, like I tell them, it's like, listen, if you want to have a drink, it does not bother me. You know, I can be around it now without it being an issue. You see what I'm saying? Um, yeah, but I, I but. But but I also think people look at it as like, oh, the, you know, you guys aren't cool anymore. You, you know, the, why, why would we want to hang out with you guys? Because it's just like you're going to be judging us the whole time while we're getting drunk. And that's not the case. It's not the case at all. No, it really isn't. Most of my friends still drink and I have no issue with it whatsoever. I just leave after two hours when they get boring. <laughs> I've got a two hour limit of hanging out with drunk people. Yeah. But, um, you know, I, I was that drunk person. I don't judge anyone. Um, you know, we're all on our own little journey. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, I think sober people are actually really cool because you can speak to them and remember it. The next day, remember what you said the next day. I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> well, Sarah, I hope you enjoyed this interview. I, I know that I did. And, and uh, anytime <clears throat> you ever want to come on, I, I really, really appreciate the time. Oh, it was a pleasure to chat to you. I've really enjoyed it as well. Thank you so much for having me. All right. You have a wonderful day. It, it blows my mind that it's already Thursday uh, in your area and I'm still stuck in Wednesday. It's like you're you're from the future. I'm in the future. Yeah, I am. yeah. Like Sarah Connor from Terminator. Like, you know, I mean, see, <laughs> this, this all wraps up into one nice, neatly packaged, wrapped with a bow on top of it. Sarah. Have a wonderful day, <laughs> and I'm glad that you don't have the rodent problem in Australia like everybody else is right now. <laughs> Thanks so much. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye. And that's the show for today. Thanks for listening to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Hey, don't be a dickhead. Do us a favor. Like, share, and subscribe to the show. Also, check out the Tuttle category at 315live.com. The Tuttle Daily Podcast is brought to you by the Vapor Shades Hobo Fish Camp. You want some cool ass sunglasses? Check out VaporShades.com. Also brought to you by Starfire Transport, StitchYouUp.com, PocketPairClub.com. Special thanks to show intern Hannah and Charlie Lamo for their contributions. Additional imaging and production is provided by CCA Productions. Facebook.com slash CCA Productions presents. Show voiceover service is brought to you by jcvoiceover.com. That guy's got a damn sexy voice. You should hire him.
check out jcvoiceover.com. If you want to help support the show, go to paypal.me slash Tuttle on the Radio. Comments? Concerns? Or do you just want to let Tuttle know he's being a dickhead? Tuttle at gmail.com. That's Tuttle with two Ds at gmail.com. Leave a voicemail at 407-270-3044. To follow all of Tuttle's social media, go to Tuttle.net. Thanks again for all your support, and we'll see you tomorrow on the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Hey, yo, Terry, what's going on?